Are you ready to finish section five? Then we'll have to do a little bit extra today. Hey everyone, Kristen Som here and we are continuing with our cup of chair quilt. So we're on section five. There's only seven sections. We're coming along really well. So yesterday we did the tan house and it was so much easier than I expected. Hopefully you'll find that to be true as well. So we have a very, very easy one today. We are going to do the deck the halls block. So you can see it here. It's just one fabric, one main fabric and batting. It's on page 23 of our booklet. And it's gonna be a really easy one. Look at this, like, could this be easier, right? So that's exciting. Um, very simple embroidered block. It's a long one though. So let's go ahead and talk about this one and then we'll talk about maybe something more. All right, so this one, it's on page 23, like I said, and our main fabric is the white with red dots on it. And this one we're gonna start with large, 14 and a half by six and a half. 14 and a half by six and a half. And make sure to back this with feasible stabilizer. Such a large piece of fabric and just embroidery on it. So it, it will definitely pucker if we did not stabilize it well. So make sure to stabilize it. Um, so again, 14 and a half by six and a half. It's the white with red dots and it's our main fabric and it's the only fabric that we have for today. So very simple. And then we are going to quilt this. So whenever we quilt it, we use our batting hand. So on the batting, I always base it on the final cut size. You can base it on the final cut size or on the quilting. Either way, it, it, it works fine. So on this one, the final cut size is 12 and a half by four and a half. So that means we want a piece of batting that is 13 by five, 13 by five for your batting. If you were to do it by your quilting, just so that you know in the future, you would, so on the cut size, you do it up half a half an inch, and if you were to do it on the quilting, like the quilting is four by twelve, so it's up an inch, so five by thirteen. All right, does that make sense? Hopefully. All right, so on the quilting for this, we are going to use plant three. That's the one that looks like ivy. Yeah, I think it looks like ivy to me, but anyway, uh, plant three, and we're going to use it in four by 12. I heard someone saying that it doesn't fit in the hoop, so I want to talk about that real quick. We talked about it extensively in the very first video for Cup of Cheer. Um, if you are using an eight by 12 hoop, so one other thing is on this design, it is meant for an eight by 12 hoop, but on the actual CD, there is instructions for those using a five by seven hoop. So you absolutely can do this in a five by seven hoop. You just do multiple hoopings and that will work absolutely fine. You probably actually only do two. Um, that would be my guess. But anyway, um, I'm not going to go over that specifically. I'm going to go over the quilting. Um, but if you're using a five by seven hoop and you're going to embroider it, just take a quick look at the uh, PDF that's specific to using a five by seven hoop for the deck, the halls block. So on the quilting, um, we are going to use four by 12, four by 12 of the plant three, and it will fit in a larger hoop. So let me just tell you, it's it's planned for an eight by 12 hoop, but a four by 12 quilting design will not fit in an eight by 12 hoop because it's actually 12 and a half inches long. So we went over that really big in the very first video. Um, the steps three and four of the quilting design are larger. Those will make it 12 and a half inches long. So if you really want to use your eight by 12 hoop, you absolutely can, but you would need to take out steps three and four. So in embroidery software, I've shown you lots of times how to do that. You literally just click on three and click delete on your keyboard, click on four and click delete on your keyboard. Of course, it won't be four. If you delete three, it would be three again. So Anyway, um, very easy to do. On my machine, I you can't do that and you can't bypass it. If it doesn't fit in your hoop, it'll say, I can't do it. I've heard that there's another machine that will let you do that, will let you just bypass it even though it's not gonna fit in your hoop. Um, so whatever works for your machine. So that's if you're using an eight by 12 hoop, definitely doable. Um, if you're using a five by seven hoop, super doable also, you just would do two hoopings of four by six of the quilting. So of that 
um, plant three, you would double hoop it and use four by six twice. And I showed on the very first video how to double hoop for those of you using a smaller hoop. Um, if you're using a six by 10 hoop, it would be the same thing because either way you need to do two hooping. So four by six works fine. Um, and that's to be able to get all the quilting on this long piece of fabric. All right, so that's very doable, absolutely easy block. Um, at the end, we are gonna have specific cut instructions and we're gonna use three of our pop rollers. So that will be different. I don't think I've ever used three before. I've used two lots of times, no problem, but I don't think I've ever done three. So that will be different. So I will show you in photos all the way through how to do that, no problem at all. So again, um, we are using the four by 12 design. So if you are using a smaller hoop, you would just double hoop, no problem at all. All right, so let's get started on that and then we'll talk about something else. Right, so after we do that really cute deck the halls block, um, 
I think we could do the filler blocks, don't you? It's such a quick, easy block. I think that we could go ahead and stretch ourselves and get all the filler blocks done too. Because section five, there wasn't much to it really. Um, we did that adorable tan house and it was so easy with our pocket right there. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. There's not much room in there, I'll tell you. Um, we're gonna probably have to stretch it a little bit. I can get my finger in there. So we'll put a little rolled note or a little, um, that would be really cute. Wouldn't that be cute? Do a rolled note with a little treasure hunt on where to find a little treasure. That would be super cute. I used to do stuff like that with my son all the time. So anyway, we have our tan house and then we have the wreath, the top part of the wreath. Remember the bottom part is for section six, but that we'll have the top part of that. So we've already completed both of those. We'll have the deck of hall, deck the hall block. So let's go ahead and talk about the filler blocks. So the filler blocks um, are always on page 61 and there's three of them today. Yes, just three. So this will be really easy. We're going to have an easy day today. Fun, fun. Um, and I will show you after we go through these, I'll show you on the computer how to group them together so you can get them all in one hoop and just crank those out. That will be a very easy day for us. So let's all right. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to need for today for the filler blocks. So for this first one, we are going to have these two fabrics. I cut mine to three by three. So that means the original size is two and a half by two and a half because I cut mine a half inch larger that either way will work fine. So either three by three or two and a half by two and a half. I did back mine with feasible stabilizer. And as I've mentioned in the other filler block videos, if you were to have three of these that you're going to sew together, then you need to make them the original original size that's listed in the book. But if they're if it's two or less, then we can go ahead and cut them a little bit larger. And the only purpose to cutting them larger is so that it will tack down. That step three and four, it will tack those down and it makes it easier. Um, but either way, actually, if you are, if you have them at the original size, you would just tape it. So either way works perfectly fine. Um, but so I cut mine to three by three. It's going to be like this. We're going to sew them together before we quilt them. All right, so sew these two together. They are not directional because the quilting is not directional. So it's not going to matter um, how you do your quilting. You don't have to worry about getting the right side up. Um, but anyway, three by three is what I did mine or two and a half by two and a half will work fine. All right, and then we're going to quilt it. So with our quilting, we are going to use batting. And so for our batting, our our batting will be three by five, whether you did it the two and a half by two and a half um, blocks or the three by three blocks. Either way, you want your batting to be three by five so that this will tack down. All right, and then for our quilting, like I mentioned, we're gonna use winter two. And winter two, we are going to use, what is it, two by four, two by four quilting design. Um, and winter two is that really cute swirly one with the snowman. So it's not a directional one. It will be really cute on those. All right. And then we have, that's for number one. That is for filler block one. For filler block two, this is my favorite, favorite one of the cup of cheer uh, fabrics. I love this one. So it's a light pink with all of these super cute coffee, coffee, hot cocoa, tea, everything probably. Yeah, there's tea bags. Oh, so cute. Anyway, I love this one. Sorry. All right. So we are going to start with this one. I did mine at three by nine. So that means that the original size is two and a half by eight and a half. So either way, two and a half by eight and a half or three by nine. I did back mine with feasible stabilizer and we are going to quilt this. So our, our batting is the same size, three by nine. I did mine larger. Um, so even if you cut yours to the regular size, you want your batting to be three by nine. So three by nine, that's on uh, filler block two and we are going to quilt it with Christmas eight. That's the stockings one. So this is one that has horizontal or vertical. So make sure to choose the correct one for your project. So this one, we are gonna use two by eight in vertical, two by eight in vertical of Christmas eight, and that is the stockings. All right, that's filler block two. And then one more and we're done. So filler block number three is this really um, pretty one. Gosh, I love this, love this. It would be even cuter if the houses were pink. 
in my world anyway, right? So how cute is this? So we are going to start with this larger piece at seven by seven. If you did the original size, it would be six and a half by six and a half um, in the cut directions, but I did mine seven by seven so that I could um, tack it down, like I mentioned. And I would recommend backing this with fusible stabilizer. We're gonna quilt it and um, this is a larger piece, but that's up to you. It's just the main fabric that is you really want to do. But for filler block number three, seven by seven, and then the batting is the same size, seven by seven for your batting. All right, and we are going to quilt this with lines six. So line six, that's a, again, one that has a horizontal and a vertical. We're gonna use six by six, line six in six by six, and we're gonna use the vertical design. So if you think about it, line six, what, what does that think, what do you think of when you think of line six on this design? I think of like snow falling. I think that would be really cute. Snow fall. It, that, that's what I picture when I see line six. All right, so those are the three filler blocks. Super easy. I'm going to bring you over to the computer and show you how to very easily group these into one um, one hooping that will just take care of everything all in one hooping be done and it's really easy and, and will make it so that you don't have all of those different steps. We'll group them together. So let's go ahead and do that. Hi everyone, I'm at my computer now and I'm just going to really quickly show you how to group the section five filler blocks. We just have three of them. It's very doable. I'm going to open in Brilliance Essentials and it opens to my 9 by 14 hoop and my 9 by 14 hoop is what I used last. That's why it opens to that. But actually this is what we will need because uh, the 2 by 8, um, that would make it hard to fit in an 8 by 12 hoop. I think you'd have to do a couple and let's just go through it here and, and you can see what will work for you. So I'm on my nine by 14 hoop. I'm gonna cl click on this H hoop just to make sure I'm seeing all of the hoop. And then I'm going to bring in the first one. All right, so I'm gonna go to merge stitch file and I am looking for winter two in my quilting. Let's see, I am on winter two not bad all right winter two and i'm looking for the two by four design right there all right double click on that and i think we might need to rotate that i'm going to rotate it because i think it'll fit better in my hoop if i think about how these are going to fit i'm going to go ahead and rotate it so I'm going to go to this button right here, this, this blue one on the left. And if I hold my um, mouse over it, it says rotate 90 degrees. All right, so I'm going to do that. Oh, it helps if I click on it. Sorry, click on it and then click um, the rotate 90 degrees. And then I'm just going to click on the stitching and I'm gonna move it up here. And I'll show you why I did that in just a minute. Um, I'm just gonna center it using those black squares in the middle. All right, that's the first one. The second one is the two by eight. So I'm going to go to merge stitch file and this one we're looking for Christmas eight. So I'm gonna close out this winter two. All right, Christmas eight embroidery files. Pez is what I use for my machine. And we're looking for a two by eight in vertical. Two by eight in vertical right there. Double click on that. All right, and then I am going to rotate it and you'll again, you'll see why. So if I click on the stitching and then click on this right rotate button, we don't want upside down stockings. So I'm gonna turn it to the right there and then I'm just gonna move it up. Not too far because I want some room between my blocks. All right, so that's the first one and the second one. Now the third one, is line six. So I'm going to bring that in. So merge stitch file and I'm going to close out this Christmas eight and look for line six right there. Embroidery files, Pez, and I'm looking for the six by six in vertical. Right there, six by six vertical. Double click on that and it goes to the center. I'm gonna click on the stitching and I'm gonna bring it all the way down to the bottom, making sure to not go over my hoop so that it stays within my hoop. And you can see now why I rotated those so that I've got more room um, 
if I had to, if I had left it um, going vertically, then my six by six would not have fit. And so this just gives me enough room. So this is the way that works well for me um, using my nine by 14 hoop. And again, because of this, I don't think that you'd be able to do it in an eight by eight because then you wouldn't be able to fit this one. You could certainly do these two in a larger hoop and then do this one in a smaller hoop. Not really smaller because it's six by six. It's really six and a half. Um, but anyway, you figure out from your hoop size what will work. This 9 by 14 fits really well for all three of these. And it gives me a little bit of room in between for that extra fabric. I only have a half inch extra fabric. But anyway. All right. So just like we always do before, I'm going to go ahead and change the colors so that I can group them and save some time. All right. So this first one, I'm going to click on this default blue. And by the way, the colors are different on each one. And so we want to make sure not to group the, the quilting color. All right, so the first one that comes up for me is Dark Aqua. I'm going to click on that. Oops, sorry, down here. Oh, that's right. It's already highlighted. My mistake. Click OK. All right, so we have the first one. One, one is Dark Aqua. And then we go to number two, click on the color. And the first one that comes up is Blaze. Say OK. And like I've said in all the other videos, it doesn't matter what color you use. Um, you just want to make sure it's the same color so that they will group. All right, so now we're on one three. I'm going to click on the color. And I know we already used dark aqua, so I'm going to click on marine and say OK. And then this orange, click on the color. We already used blaze. And I'm going to click on Oriel. Don't you love it when you get messages from friends and it makes you smile? All right, so this, um, the quilting color right there, see this quilting, um, I am going to change that because if I didn't change it, then they're all going to group together and we don't want any of these to group because they're all different colors. We want time for the machine to stop so that we can change the thread color. So I'm going to click on the color and I'm going to click on the first one, which is Sprout. All right, now we're on to number two. So number one is all done. Number two, so two, one, this first one, click on it and click on the color down here. And we want the same as we used before. So one, one, we use dark aqua. So on two, one, we're going to use dark aqua. All right. And then the same for two, two, click on the color. We know it's Oriel. Sorry, we already used blaze and you can see it right here. One, two, we're on two, two and we want it the same and it's blaze. So sorry, that is what we want, blaze. See, I got distracted my, by my message from my friend. All right, so one three is marine, so we want two three to be marine. Click on the color and click on marine right here and say OK. All right, and then two four, one four, we used Oriel, so two four, click on that, click on the color, and we want Oriel right there. Say OK. All right, now on this default 17 turquoise, we're going to click on this and we're going to use the second one. We use Sprout. We don't want the same color here. It's up to you, depending on the colors you're going to use for your quilting, but I'm going to use them all three different colors. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the second one, which is sea green here and say OK. All right, and then number three, same thing as before. The first one, click on the color and we know we want dark aqua. And the second one right here, the orange, uh, three, two, we want blaze. And then three, three, we know we want marine, which is that second color there. And the orange, click on the color, and we want Oreo. All right, and then on that default 17 turquoise, we want it different again. So we're going to go down to the third color here, which for me is mint. All right. So we currently have 15 colors. We're going to go ahead and make sure everything is within the hoop size. It's all good. And I'm going to go to utility color sort. And it reduced it by eight color changes. I'm going to click on new view and quickly look through the colors. All right, so there's the um, batting placement stitch and they're all grouped and then the tack down stitch of the batting and the 
placement stitch for the main fabric all grouped and the tack down stitch or basting stitch of the main fabric and then we have our three quilting designs perfect so that is exactly how we wanted it so go to file save stitch file as and i'm going to put it in my filler block um, let's see cup of chair quilt i made a folder right here you would just on the pc you click on this button here that says create no new folder and i created this folder that says filler blocks so I'm going to double click on that to open that folder and you can see I've got my other um, filler blocks in there and I'm going to say section 5 fillers and I am doing a 9 by 14 hoop. You don't need to put that but it gives you a little reminder just in case you forgot what hoop you need. All right and save. So that's all done. My machine's off. I always forget to turn it on when I'm doing this. Um, but if your machine was on and you have a Wi-Fi machine, you could go to utility. Is it utility? Yes. Um, send to Solaris XP1. Um, but mine's not on, so it won't know where to send it. All right, so that's easy, quick. Um, let's go ahead and get stitching these very easy blocks today. Mm -hmm. 